the start of a new National Hockey League season in full, at least stateside, tonight on the NHL's opening night for 2024-25. So to get you set for the season, and of course, to preview it all, NHL's Pete Jensen joins us live right here on this Tuesday on the early line on Sports Grid. Pete hosts the Fantasy on Ice podcast for the National Hockey League to give you all the analysis and insight you need for a new year on the ice. Pete, we are so glad to have you here on this Tuesday morning. Thanks for the time. Always a blast to join you guys, whether it's the regular season opening night Last postseason was a dandy, of course, with the Panthers defending their title beginning tonight against the rival Boston Bruins. It's cool that Boston got Jeremy Swayman signed, sealed, and hopefully ready to deliver here for opening night. A lot of playoff history between Florida and Boston, as we will see tonight in Sunrise to start off a new regular season. Pete, let's start big picture. Looking at the Stanley Cup title odds as of this moment, entering a new year. The reigning champs, the Panthers, have that second best price at 10-1, to but notice who was at the top. It's the Edmonton Oilers, of course, a sensational game seven in a seven game Stanley Cup final between these two. Florida opened up a three nothing lead. Edmonton rallied, winning the next three games to force that decisive take all game seven. So, Pete, it's been 31 years now, as Edmonton came up short a season ago, since a Canadian team has won the most prized possession in hockey, Lord Stanley's Cup. Is this the year that it finally changes, entering 2024-25, with the Oilers booked as the preseason favorite? They have a great chance to win it all if they stay healthy. They locked up Leon Dreisaitl for the foreseeable future, as that was an early preseason storyline. They cleared that up quickly. Connor McDavid's the best player in the NHL. He has players like Zach Hyman, of course, Evan Bouchard, producing at a historic pace in the postseason along for the ride. They also improved in the offseason considerably, adding players like Jeff Skinner. Victor Arvidsson is a really strong two-way forward. Skinner's a goal scorer who could rejuvenate his career playing with dry saddle. That's the second line right now. Skinner, dry saddle, Arvidsson. They also added prospect Matthew Savoy from Buffalo in a separate deal. And Vasily Podkolzin has a little goal scoring potential down the road if he's elevated. This is the year for Edmonton. There's no reason they can't get it done. Stuart Skinner last postseason even proved that he can rise to the occasion and be a reliable goaltender when it matters most. Pete, if I had a dollar for every time I've heard this is Edmonton's year, I would already be retired on this show. Every year is Edmonton's year, or it's some team from Canada that never ends up happening here. Uh, But that's in the West is great. Who do you like coming out of the East if it's not the reigning champs? Whose year is it, do you think, in the East? I think the Rangers uh, have the star power. They have the big five to get it done. They need to address the secondary scoring. I like what I saw from the preseason from their prospect rookie defenseman, Zach Jones, um, as a you know secondary or third defenseman behind Adam Fox and Ke'Andre Miller. If the Rangers stay healthy, there's a little injury concern with Artemi Panarin entering the season. That team's a little grizzled, and I think they could take a different approach at the trade deadline this year. They went all in two years ago with Kane and Tarasenko. It backfired. They didn't have the chemistry. Last year, they were quiet. They wanted to keep the first-round pick at the Sphere. I get it. This year, between the Rangers and the Knicks, it's going to be an arms race at the Garden, and I could see the (laughs) Rangers making a big move before the deadline to boost their overall team. And, of course, Alexi Lafreniere needs to keep the upward trajectory going. Down the stretch last year was excellent. In the postseason, was one of the best even-strength goal scorers in the league. Let's see him take the next step as well to get the Rangers to the promised land. Championship caliber rosters at Madison Square Garden for both the Knicks and the Rangers. You know that will be the expectation and the narrative entering this year. The reigning champs. 
That's the Florida Panthers. After being the unlikely eight seed to reach the cup final two years ago, they end atop the National Hockey League, hoisting Lord Stanley's Cup, winning in seven games. It got a little bit dicier than expected against the Edmonton Oilers. Pete, they are one of three, or they are one of the six teams in action tonight to start off a new season, taking on the Boston Bruins. What do you expect Florida to do for an encore in 2024-25? I have them winning the division. Uh, the Atlantic is really tough to predict. I mean, you could talk about the ceilings of teams like Toronto, Tampa Bay, and Boston. You could also talk about their floors. I think Boston cleared that up a little bit with Jimmy Swayman signing. They have him in Corpus Allo. So the Bruins should be fine to make the playoffs. I do have my worries, like if Joseph Wall got injured for the Maple Leafs, what their floor would be, the goaltender. Sampa, they lost uh, Stamkos and Sergachev in the offseason. What is their floor going to be if they deal with any injury at any point for any stretch to a Hedman or Kucherov point? or guys like that, Gensel, who they acquired in the offseason. So to answer your question, I think Florida is a pretty safe pick to win the division. The only concern with them, they have a stable lineup mostly across the board. They did lose Brandon Montour in free agency to the Kraken, their top power play defenseman, and then also um, Oliver ekman Larson, who was a key secondary guy in a workhorse. They lost him in free agency to the Maple Leafs. So that's a little problems on the back end maybe could catch up to them in the playoffs this upcoming year. So if, if you like, Pete, uh, Edmonton to uh, to make a run at this, I, I would imagine the front runner for the heart has got to be McDavid uh, on some level, right? And if not him, then who? I mean, I think Jack Hughes has a glimmer here if he stays healthy. I think his point ceiling could be something in the 120s, 130s. We saw it last year, right? Like uh, McKinnon had 140. We always knew he had that capability if he stayed healthy for a full season, shattered his previous career high, won the Hart Trophy in a nail biter over Kucherov. So it's not like McDavid wins this thing every single year. He is my pick to win the award because of all his individual accolades. The guy can drop 150 points in a hurry without thinking twice and finish uh, you know, head and shoulders above the rest of the league. But if the Devils are the clear bounce back team of the season and they're off to a good start here after the global series sweep of the Sabres, Jack Hughes, yeah. shots on goal machine, point producer, like few other players in the league on a per game basis. So I really like Jack Hughes' chances if he stays healthy. Not just an optimistic year ahead for the Rangers at MSG. You cross the river, you head over to Newark in the Rock. They have high hopes for the New Jersey Devils as well. Pete, at the yep. bottom of the Hart Trophy odds, you see a familiar name, Connor Bedard, who, despite missing 14 games in his rookie year for Chicago, did win the Calder Trophy as the NHL's top rookie. 22 goals, 39 assists a season ago. 30-1, to 10th best price to win the Hart Trophy. What does Bedard do in his second year in the National Hockey League? Yeah, I mean, if you want to have some fun, uh, of course, like uh, low risk, Connor Bedard, Macklin Celebrini, uh, the, this is the future of the NHL at our fingertips. Celebrini, of course, is rookie eligible. Sounds like he's good to go for the opening night for the Sharks. They also have Will Smith, another Calder contender. But Connor Bedard produced nearly a point per game last year for a terrible Blackhawks team that dealt with major injuries to Seth Jones and Taylor Hall. Both of those guys are back. They added Tyler Bertuzzi for some, you know, insurance on his wing, you could say, a little protection. Also, Tavo Teravainen is back in Chicago. Taylor Hall, former MVP, is healthy. Philip Kurashev has played really well with Bedard. That means a much stronger supporting cast. So the ceiling of Connor Bedard is to keep the Blackhawks in contention, maybe for a wild card spot, and therefore he would enter the Hart Trophy conversation just because of what he means to the nhl i feel like the voters would just have a frenzy you know flocking to this guy the hawks on the road tonight against the nhl's newest club it's the utah hockey club they host chicago tonight a triple header on opening night of the nhl season pete we appreciate the time as always we'll talk very soon